Okay, we're going to talk about graphing uh, sine and cosine graphs, creating sine and cosine graphs. And I'm going to show you two processes of this. One is a conceptual approach where we transform a parent function around, and another is a mechanical approach that, that perhaps you've never seen before if you haven't taken this class. And, and uh, generally, there's a very, very positive response to this. In fact, it's so good that oftentimes students just abandon the conceptual approach altogether, which I'm not recommending, but, but certainly would be an option because it is so slick. So let, let's get right into it. And we are to sketch this graph. Now, I'm going to assume that if you're viewing this, you have this background knowledge. If we, if, we, if we knew what the graph of sine of x looks like, we would know that the graph of this looks just like it, except we are shifted to the left, pi on 4, because our value for x that makes this 0 is negative pi on 4. So it's a shift to the left, pi on 4. Um, I have a previous video about pre-functions and post-functions that explains that. And then this minus 2 affects the y value, because once we come out of sine, this is a post function. We subtract 2 from y, so this shifts down 2. Okay, now if we know y equals sine of x looks like this, this is our parent function. So here's pi, and we have these points on there. Pi on 2, 1, pi 0, 3 halves pi, negative 1, 2 pi 0. If we know it looks like that, if we can just translate the defining points, those five points, we, we, can, we can fit the curve in. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this up. I know that I need to be down two, so I'm going to give myself a little bit of room to, to move down. I know I'm going to be left one, pi on four, so a little bit of room to move to the left. And I'm going to count by, I'm just going to go ahead and count out my half pies. One half pi, pi. Three halves pi, four halves pi, two pi. Negative pi on two. So here, are, and I, I do know I'm down two, but we'll, we'll get to that. I guess I'll give myself some tick marks here. A couple tick marks up here. I know it's going down two, so I might need a few, a few spaces down here to move the graph to. But I need to know that these are my defining values of sine right here. And now I'm going to shift those around in two steps. I'm going to move to the left pi on 4 and down 2. And I'm going to start with this point right at the origin. Well, if I'm moving left pi on 4, I think I'm going to add my 1 fourth tick mark. So here's 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths pi, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, 2 pi. Negative 1 fourth pi back here. So if I take this point at the origin to the left, just put a little dot there, to the left pi on 4 and down 2, this is, a, this is on my new function. This is on y. So next point, left pi on 2, down 2. Next point, actually I should have been left pi on 4. I think I said that wrong. Left pi on 4, down 2. This point, left pi on 4, down 2. 2. Left pi on 4, down 2. And then to get the shape right, a lot of times I'll see people will draw sine graphs and it ends up looking almost like, I call it jack-o'-lantern T, something like this. I always start at the peaks and then curve down. Or start at the valleys, come out flat and curve up, come out flat and curve up. Sorry. Okay. A little smart board issue right there. So I have a full period, and I have hit the y-axis somewhere along the way between this defining point and this defining point. So that is what we're looking for. Okay. So that's a conceptual approach to this. Um, certainly in past, the past years, you might have needed to extend that another period. We could clearly do that at this point. I realize if I'm counting by 1 fourth pies, and I wanted to extend that, this would be the 3 pi. And I could certainly say, realize that my next step would be, notice that there's two tick marks between my points. Two tick marks, one, two tick marks. And now I would be, let's see, I'm up at this point. So then two tick marks, 
and I'm down one and two tick marks, etc. So we could certainly extend this graph. I'm looking for one full period and I want to incorporate in the y-axis. Okay, so that's our conceptual approach to a sine graph. Let's take a look at a cosine graph. Same approach. We need to know y equals cosine of x, just the parent function. Looks like this. 0 gives me 1, pi on 2 gives me 0, pi gives me negative 1, back to 0, up to 1. So there's our parent function. Well, this, this looks just like that graph, except our myvax most interesting value of x is pi on 2, which means we move to the right pi on 2. Then we take the cosine, we get a y value, so then we are 2 times as tall but upside down. So step one, step two, step three from our defining points. So let's go ahead and build this graph. Um, I know I'm going to be shifting to the right, so I want to leave myself lots of room to the right. I'm going to put it over here. I know I'm going to be twice as tall. So here I'm not shifting up or down from there, but twice as tall. I think that'll do it for me. Uh, 1 half, 2 halves pi, 3 halves, 4 halves pi, 5 halves, maybe 6 halves pi here. Uh, maybe I'll go to the left 1 half pi, but I don't think I need to go any further than that. Okay, so let's put the initial defining values of plain old y equals cosine of x. Those are from above. Really easy to memorize those, doesn't take much time. We just see this graph and look at the defining points. Okay, and now I'm just gonna take those through the process. Since I'm shifting those to the right, I'm gonna start with my points on the right. So you, you could start with any point, to be honest, but I'm gonna start with this point over here at two pi one. I shift to the right pi on two. I make it twice as tall, but I take it upside down. So that ends up down at negative two. All right, take this point right pi on 2, twice as tall as 0, 0, upside down 0, still 0. At this point, right pi on 2, twice as tall, negative 2, upside down, positive 2. This point, right pi on 2, twice as tall, 0, 0, upside down 0, still 0. Right, this point, right pi on 2, twice as tall, 2, upside down, negative 2, and there is a full period of cosine translated. For me, that would not be enough. Uh, many people just say, give me two full periods. I want a full period, but I want to tie into the y-axis. Notice, each step, I, I go, for instance, from here, I go over one increment and down two, or I go over one increment, up two. Clearly, I'm coming back to center line here, when I go over one increment, it gets me right on the y-axis to right here. So there is a, over a full period, y-axis included. That is the conceptual approach. Not too bad. It gets worse. This one. What all is happening here? We would be trained to say that this graph, I know ultimately it's going to be two times as tall, upside down, up to... Um, but this part right in here, this 2 pi on 3, every, we would be trained to say everything happens 2 pi on 3 times as fast. There's a lot going on there. So here's where a nice mechanical approach occurs. And this I call rubber stamping, and you'll see why I call that. Um, back in the day, back when I was in, in high school learning this, what we would do is we had trig tables. We didn't have calculators that found this stuff for us in the back of the book. Just listen, listen. We would just try putting in angles for x. And then we'd multiply that by 2 times pi, and then we'd divide by 3, and then we'd look in the trig table and find a value. And we know this graph is going to look something like, a, it was going to look like a sine graph, obviously. That was kind of bad. But uh, we would hope to find points that were up here and up here and up here and maybe our center line points, but we'd choose values of x and it would get translated around and we'd find a point here. And we wouldn't know, you know, does that define it? So we would have to just find point after point after point till we got a really good feel for what the graph looked like. And I was pretty proud of this. I came back, but I was also willing to kind of investigate 
And I came back the next day and we were doing these and I was able to do them very, very quickly because I realized something. I really don't care what X is. <coughs> Excuse me. What I really care about is what 2 pi X on 3 is. So I started charting these this way. So what I did, here was the process I was going through. I was choosing a value for X. I was multiplying that by pi and multiplying that by 2 and dividing that by 3 and putting that into sine and then multiplying that by negative 2 and adding 2. That's basically the broken down order of operation process. And when I realized this, I thought, man, I am really on to something. This is going to be fun in class tomorrow because I'm going to finish this assignment a lot faster than everybody else. I didn't care what X was. I cared what was going on right down here after I, let me put that in another color. It's so important. Oops, that's not another color. Here's another color. After I got done dividing by three, it was important then what my value was that went into sine. The values I want to go into sine are zero, pi on two, pi, three halves pi, and two pi. Because I know those values. Remember what the graph looks like two slides ago. Sine of zero, zero, sine of pi on two, one, sine of pi, zero, sine of three halves pi, negative one, sine of two pi, zero. I am just visualizing this in my head as I'm going through that. There, 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 and there. So I didn't memorize that data that I just put in there. I've memorized this graph, and I see it as I'm putting it in there. Okay, once I come out of sign, this is a breeze. My next step is to multiply by negative 2, 0, negative 2, 0, 2, 0. And then I'm to add to 2, 0, 2, 4, 2. And this kind of makes sense to me. My graph, I see it fits between 0 and 4. Well, why is that? Because it's twice as tall. Normally, negative 1 to 1, now negative 2 to 2. But up 2, negative 2 to 2, up 2 would be 0 to 4. Well, that's pretty slick. Here's the little bit, little, this is a little bit trickier. I now want to work backwards. I want to go from row 4 to row 3. To get from row 3 to row 4, I was supposed to divide 3. To get back, I'm going to multiply by 3. So when I multiply by 3, I get 3 times 0, 3 times pi on 2, 3 times pi, 3 times 3 halves pi, 9 halves pi, and 3 times 2 pi, 6 pi. To get from row 2 to row 3, I multiplied by 2. To get backwards, I'm going to divide by 2 or multiply 1 half. And I get 0, 3 fourths pi, 3 halves pi, 9 fourths pi, and 6 halves or 3 pi. To get from row 1 to row 2, I multiplied by pi. I'm going backwards. I'm actually dividing by pi. And I get 0, 3 fourths, 3 halves, 9 fourths. And if I'm dividing by pi, I just get 3 here. Oh, so the period is just from 0 to 3, no pi's included. Let's see if that makes sense. I said earlier, we would be trained to say this is 2 2 times pi on 3 times as fast. If a graph normally had a period from 0 to 2 pi and it was twice as fast, I'd divide by 2. If it's 2 pi on 3 times as fast, I divide by 2 pi on 3. And what do I get? This is 3, period 3. So that's a nice confirmation. I feel pretty good about these ordered pairs. Understand, my ordered pairs are 0, 2, 3 fourths, 0 etc. So I'm going to count out to 3. I can count by 3 fourths. If you understand, this is 0, 3 fourths, 6 fourths, 9 fourths. Or you could count by 1 fourth. Um, so I'm going to go, let's see, let's do it that way. 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, 7 fourths, 8 fourths, 9 fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths, 12 fourths, there's 3. Kind of weird tick marking because right here is 1. But 
this is three fourths. This is six fourths or three halves. Nine fourths, those are kind of my interesting values. So Y values, I want to go zero, two, four. So zero, one, two, three, four. Extend this guy a little bit. And all of those points should fit on here conveniently now. So my first point, zero, two. Next point, three fourths, zero. Next point, three halves, two. Next point, nine fourths, four. Next point, three, gets me to back to two. So we get a curve from flat out of here, flat out of the peaks and valleys, gives us a pretty good shape. We get a curve looks like that, and that is pretty slick. Only it gets better. What if, it's gonna erase a lot of things I don't necessarily want erased. What if we only did the first two columns, we cut our work by 60%. But if we didn't do any of the rest of this, would that possibly be enough for us to create the graph? So what I'm really looking at now, if we just set this guy up, what I'm really looking at now is this would be my defining values, the values I want to put into sign. Let's come back down to this. Take that guy off, this guy off. Okay, so what I have now is just the point zero two, and just the point three four zero. And you say, how do I know where to go from that? Well, where does sine, the graph of sine, start? Just plain old sine of x starts at the center line. What do I mean by that? Right across here. So if its first move was on center line, and we went down, we have to return to center line. How hard is it to know what the, that we started on center line? Pretty easy. The center line is at two, which means if I if it took me over to three fourths, three increments to get down one, I need three more of those increments, another three fourths, to get back up to here center line. Three more fourths take me over here. Now I need to find my peak. Well, if my valley was down two, my peak is up to three more increments back to center line. We can actually do this with just the first two columns if we have a good understanding of center line. So that's pretty exciting. I just cut your work down on a pretty slick process by 60%. Let's practice that again. Okay, so here we have a cosine graph. If we're going to stamp this, and I would because there's a lot going on here, I'm going to choose a value for x. I'm going to multiply it by negative 2. I'm going to add pi to that. I'm going to take the cosine of that. I'm going to multiply by 5, and I'm going to add 6. Kind of an interesting thing I see occur on this every now and then. Is I will see people, because the pi comes first, put pi right here and say, I'm going to choose a value for pi. Well, we don't get to choose values for pi. Pi is a constant. So we want to choose values for x and proceed. The key to this, I want what goes into cosine to be... 0 and pi on 2 and pi and 3 halves pi and 2 pi because cosine of 0 is 1. Check two slides ago. And pi on 2 is 0 and negative 1 and 0 and 1. Multiply by 5. 5, 0, negative 5, 0, 5. Add 6, 11. 6, 1, 6, 11. Subtract pi. I'm going backwards. Negative pi negative pi on 2, 0, pi on 2, 2 pi minus pi, pi. Divide negative 2 or multiply negative 1 half. That gives me positive pi on 2. This gives me positive pi on 4, 0, negative pi on 4 negative pi on 2. So let's go ahead and chart that as if we really needed to do all five positions. And I realize my graph needs to go to the right pi on 2 to the left pi on 2. So I'm going to just split it right down the middle here. I realize it needs to go all the way up to 11. So I'm going to give myself some room here. Interesting values occur at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay? I need to go in steps of fourths. So 1 fourth, 2 fourths. That's pi on 2. Negative 1 fourth, negative 2 fourths. Negative 2 fourths pi, or, of course, negative pi on 2. So at pi on 2, see it? Pi on 2, I'm at 11. Pi on 2, I'm up at 11. And at pi on 4, I'm up at 6. But I said before we only really need that if we have an understanding. Where does cosine normally start? Y equals cosine of x starts here, to there, to there, to there, to there. Cosine of x does not start, and here's my starting point, it does not start at center line. It starts at a peak or a valley if it's upside down. Or where is center line? Center line is up six. Here is our center line. You might want to include that in there, which means if I went over one increment and then down five, where am I going next? Over one increment down five. Now I recover to center line over one of my counting increments up five. Isn't that awesome? Over one of my increments up five. Oops, should have made that one in blue. There is my translated graph. Let's take a look. How'd that work out? Here is 0, 1, 0, 1. Here is negative pi on 4, obviously. Negative 1 fourth pi 6. Negative pi on 4, 6. And here is negative 2 fourths or negative pi on 2, 11. Negative pi on 2, 11. Too good to be true. What a slick approach. Um, I would recommend if you're just starting this, you might want to build the full chart. But you should be able to work yourself down into just the first two columns of it. Um, that's a full period, hits the y-axis. Certainly we could build on to that. If I wanted to go one more increment over here to 3 fourths pi, pretty clear to see where we would be. Over an increment. All sorts of different colors here. Down 5. So we could build we could build more of that we could continue building that as much space as we had so hope that's helpful um we're gonna we're gonna talk about tangent cosecant cosecant cotangent graphs much along the same uh much along the same way with stamping or conceptually moving them we have all sorts of options at our disposal um stay tuned appreciate you looking in and good luck to you